This is Sid Roth saying, I have a vision. Now is the set time to blow the trumpet in Zion. Shalom, Mishpucha. Shalom, family. Mishpucha is a Hebrew word. It means family. We're the Mishpucha, the family with the Jewish heart, made up of Jewish and non-Jewish people that are brand new creations in the Messiah, getting ready, Mishpucha, to blow the grandest shofar. Oh, the grandest trumpet in Zion. We want everyone, everywhere, to hear the good news. We want everyone, everywhere, to be so filled with God's Spirit, so red hot for Jesus, that they're going to walk right into this next move of God. Now, this Friday and Saturday are Shavuot. That's the Hebrew word for Pentecost. You remember in the book of Acts, the second chapter? I mean, what timing? Shavuot is when uh, we're told in, uh, by the rabbis the law was given on Mount Sinai. And on that same date... In the book of Acts, the second chapter, the Holy Spirit descended, which allowed us to observe the law in, in the power necessary to follow things like the Ten Commandments. And I can't think of a better guest. I believe the Spirit of God arranged this. My guest this week is Dave Roberson. He's the senior pastor from the Family Prayer Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, I've known Dave a number of years, and although I've heard his testimony, uh, I believe there's a generation of you that have not, and he moves in a supernatural power of the Spirit of God, like we're all supposed to move, like we read about in the Bible, but unfortunately, most believers are not moving there. And I believe that there's a key that you're going to begin to comprehend and understand that will be one of the very, very sovereign points in your life that you're going to look back and you're going to say, that's when I moved from where I was to that next point in God. Uh, Dave, I want to take you back uh, as, as a young man, uh, you came from a rough background. Uh, you got saved. But by age 30, you were one of these very legalistic Christians, and then all of a sudden you had a vision. Tell me about it. Well, Sid, I, I'm, just, I'm so glad to, to be here with you. And when you said that, it brought back memories. You know, I could just feel the, the presence of God come on me. But I was what we'd call ultra holiness. I was, uh, we had a, a legalistic way of looking at things. Really, we loved God so much that if we thought he said, take all our jewelry off, we would take it off. And dress a certain way, we'd dress a certain way. We just loved him. But at 30 years old, the hunger on the inside of me was so strong. That kind of thirsting that that just can't be quenched by men and, and, and men's doctrines and things. And I was so, so thirsty to know him after his power. And since then, oh, I have found out that, that a person, I mean, you can walk all the way into everything Jesus said you could be. And out of everything he said you're free from, that walk of power, I have found out that you can walk all the way into him on purpose just because you get up one day and decide, I'm going to make this journey. It's all there for you. You can have it, and you can walk in his power. Well, that particular day, I was so hungry, no, just so hungry for his power, to know him after his power. And I woke up that morning thinking that I was going to see the bedroom as normal. And it was an anointing that woke me up. And when this anointing woke me up, I opened my eyes expecting to see the bedroom. Instead, I saw a vision. And in this vision, I was sitting in a crowd, third row back, 
and the front person who was running the service and leading worship, and I knew it was my service, and this was all a vision. And she says, or he says, and now our evangelist, and he looks at me, and I started to get up, and then he turns and looks at the curtain. And a young woman comes out from behind the curtain. There were several people there in a wheelchair. And this young woman takes the services. The power comes in so heavy, you could cut it with a knife almost. And the people get out of the wheelchairs. Everything takes place. And then she looks at me and the whole crowd disappears. And she says, I don't know why God has given this ministry to me. I I really didn't know I was called. And she said, one of you must have failed. And the whole crowd had disappeared. It was just me and her. And that's when I come out of the vision. And it was that day that I went down and gave a two-week notice on my job. And then I went down to a little eight-by-eight prayer closet down at the church. And I I decided I was just going to stay in there and pray until I I didn't know what to do. And I didn't even know what praying in tongues would do at that point. I just locked myself up in that eight-by-eight for about the same hours that I'd have normally worked my job. Well, it didn't take me very long to run out of English. And so I switched to praying in tongues, not because I knew what it would do or I knew the edification process or that I knew what Jude 20 said when it said that we build ourselves up on our most holy God kind of faith. I didn't know it would do all of that. All I knew that I had locked myself in this closet this prayer closet, eight by eight room. And I had so many hours ahead of me to go. So I only switched to praying in tongues. Not because I knew what it would do, that supernatural language, but just to survive the hours that I had committed to. And so about six weeks went by. And, oh, the time was crawling by. I mean, I'd go in there and lock myself up and pray in English until I run out of English. And then I'd have so many hours ahead of me. So I just switched to praying in tongues, not because I even knew that I could any time I wanted to. I found that out later. But I switched to praying in tongues just to survive those hours I had committed myself to. Well, the hours just crept by. I mean, they went so slow. And a woman found out what I was doing, and she beat on the door. She says, are you feeling any change? And I said, as a matter of fact, I am. I'm getting my tongue is getting tired and (laughs) dry. Now, she says, I mean, do you feel any spiritual change? And I really hadn't at that point. So she says, oh, well, i got to go. Well, I stayed in. Oh, about three months and all. And that same woman came back. And she began to tell me about a a time that a church was going to meet together on that weekend. And this church did not believe in speaking with tongues. And she asked me if I would like to come over and be part of that fellowship at this lay witness. It was just laymen. And so to tell you the truth, it seemed like a legal excuse to get out of my prayer closet. And I would have just taken any reason. I said, oh, yes, I'd love to go. So I I went home and changed real quick, and I got there late. Because I got there late, I didn't know the woman they set me down next to came in on a crutch. See, I didn't know that. See, I was so hungry to know him after his power. That's why I was locked up in the closet. They set me next to her. We had a few minutes to fellowship. They brought me a cup of coffee. I sat there drinking my coffee, and we were talking, and all of a sudden they said, hey, the man is going to speak now. And a a man came up, and he had kind of a little pulpit there. So he got behind it, and he was going to teach the lay witness that was in these people's home. So I sat next to this woman. 
So he began to teach. And I wasn't used to somebody teaching like him. I used to holding this preachers that shouted and jumped pews. And this man began to, and we know that Jesus is the great celestial go-between, the mm. troubled waters of mankind, and the omnipotent God. And I'm going, oh, brother. I was thinking, I wished I was back in the prayer closet. It was more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting there. I had no idea what was about to happen. No idea. And just out of boredom, I was shaking my coffee and watching the little rings work its way to the side. I turned around and looked at the woman next to me. Suddenly, I had no idea what was going to happen. Suddenly, it was like a transparency. Uh, an x-ray was put up between me and her, and I seen a hip socket. And it's the funniest thing. I could see through this vision and see her, but yet I could see the hip socket. At that time, I didn't know that vision materialized in my spirit. But it was suspended there between me and her. And it was so vivid that I turned around to see if anybody else could see it. And I, I looked at it and I says, my God, what do you want me to do? And, and it was absolute silence, like if you don't know. And so finally, I leaned over to the woman and I said, ma'am, is there something wrong with your hip? And, and the word arthritis dropped into my spirit. So I said, it's arthritis. Because in the vision, it was a dark socket, and it was deteriorated. And she says, well, young man, that's what the doctor tells me. And I yelled, glory to God. And she says, I beg your pardon. I says, oh, oh, God's going to heal you. I know he's going to heal you. Can I pray for you? And to her and her religion, prayer meant sometime in the course of my day to bow my head and remember her. Dave, because we're running out of time, yes. what happened? Well, I jumped around in front of her because she said, yes, you can pray for me. I jumped around in front of her. I grabbed her by the leg and held them up, and one was three to four inches shorter than the other. And I said the name of Jesus, and that leg cracked and popped and came out. She got up and walked just as normal and said, I wept like a baby because I just dreamed of things like that. Now it was coming to pass. And he said to me a little bit later on, Son, it's because you have discovered a process of edification from praying in tongues. Yeah, you know, Dave, there are people that their lives are going to be changed. Every, one, every book we offer, every cassette is valuable and important. But this is special. Mishbucha. The book, the title, The Walk of the Spirit, The Walk of Power, The Vital Role of Praying in Tongues, it's $15 postage paid. And my producer of the radio show that reads books all the time read this book, and she says it's the best spiritual book she's read in years. It's time for you to move from where you are to that next point. And you say, well, how can a book on speaking in tongues do it? Trust me. I'll give you your money back if you don't like it. $15 <laughs> postage paid, the spirit, the walk of power, the vital role of praying in tongues. If you would like to receive a complimentary copy of our bi-monthly teaching newsletter, cassette catalog, or information about becoming Mishpocha, write to me, Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 315 or call our order-only line, 1-800-548-1918. To place a credit card order, call anytime, 1-800-548-1918. For all other calls, the number is 912-265-2500. That's 912-265-2500. For a cassette tape of this week's broadcast, send $5 to Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 31521. Look us up on the web, www.sidroth.org. That's www.sidroth.org.